have our last. If, if the, Joe, Joe um, hey Tim, somebody's got somebody's got feedback from uh, somebody's watching the feed. You got to mute it or is it me? No, it looks like I'm feeding back. I don't know why. I got my volume on really low. Okay. Um, how you doing, Joe? Oh, I'm all right. How's it going, man? Good. Thanks for coming on. I was hoping you would. Yeah, when you when you rang earlier, I was uh, spending some time with my wife, so I was. Uh, I didn't get didn't. Uh, You're in. Are you in Canada really also? also? Here I am now. You, are you in Canada also? No, I'm in New Jersey. Okay, you're over here with me. Um, just to introduce you to um, Cy Tenberg and Kate and um, Jordan, uh, Joe hangs out in a um, Google Hangout with me on Sunday nights, um, Lasoyo's Hangout, which has uh, a few atheists, a few Christian moderates, and um, labeled me and another gentleman as fundamentalists. So, um, but Joe and I have actually never really um, engaged each other as um, you know, challenging atheism versus Christianity. So we basically haven't really had that debate, have we not, Joe? Uh, we have not. <laughs> we, I mean, we've talked about a few specific, you know, details related to the Bible, but nothing as far as you know, belief versus non-belief. But I appreciate you coming on, and my special guest on this first Google Hangout show for me is Cy, and um, he's got the website Proof God Exists, and he's a he's a great Proof that God Exists dot org. If you're gonna plug it, you're gonna do it right. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> and um, so we're glad you're here. And uh, why are you an atheist, sir? Have you been watching the exchange show? Uh, no, I haven't. Like I said, I said a little bit ago, I was uh, I was uh, spending some time with my wife, so I. Uh, well, I appreciate you showing up because the, the two previous uh, atheist guests uh, seem to have some kind of substance abuse issues going on, and they weren't very coherent. But um, I, I, I'll ask you the same questions, and, and we'll see how, how far we get with that, and maybe we can do some reasoning together because uh, as Christians, that's what we're commanded to do. We're commanded to reason with people. Mm -hmm. I see that uh, Tim has left here. But uh, you would agree that this discussion we're having presupposes knowledge. We have to be able to know things in order to have a discussion, correct? Of course, I'm not a solipsist. <laughs> okay. Now, what, what I say is that Scripture says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. What that basically means is that you have to start with God to know anything at all. So the fact that you know things actually exposes that you know that God exists. But well, see the problem. The problem with your I have a problem with your uh, your your foundation though, because basically you're you're taking the assumption that the the Bible is correct. So it's kind of like you basically you're fi you're you're fi finding that the Bible is correct by assuming the Bible's correct. So that, well, I'm not only I'm not only going to quote scripture. I'm going to demonstrate it for you too. Because the question I'm going to ask you is, could you be wrong about everything you claim to know? Absolutely. Okay. Now, if you could be wrong about everything you claim to know, you've given up knowledge. And I, let me explain that for you. Let's say you asked me what was the speed of the road outside my house right now, and I said it's 30 miles per hour, but I could be wrong. Do I know it? Well, look, and I've I've heard this line before. This this isn't anything particularly new. Basically, when when you say that you know I could be wrong because of course my perception could be wrong. So whether or not, so I see things, and I have I have to assume that at some level that I have some ability to perceive the world around. Me. Otherwise, I have no ability, as you said, we have no ability to talk or no ability to do anything. Right. So well, back to my question now. Well, if I'm I trying said to, answer, to, sorry, I'm go trying on. to answer your question, but I, I guess what I'm, just, what I'm trying to get at here is, is that, um, you know, basically you're using no in, in a kind of couple different frames. And, um, you know, I guess I've heard this before. This is not nothing, this is nothing new. Okay. Um, so the thing is, is that just because... Okay, I say I know something. There's a difference between no, saying you know it and saying you know something with absolute certainty. I have, I do not have absolute certainty about anything because I can't, because I'm being intellectually honest. Are you that absolutely means, certain that you can't? Excuse me. Are you absolutely certain that you can't? <laughs> I would have no way to be able to tell. So, so, so that's so actually yes. And so no, I don't. I don't know that I couldn't absolutely know something. Okay, are you certain about that? 
<laughs> yes, actually. Okay. Now, back to my question. If I say that I could be wrong about every, well, if, if I said, if I asked, if you asked me what was the speed of the road outside my house and I said it's 30 miles per hour, but I could be wrong, do I know it? You can have, there's, knowing is not, is not a binary thing. It's not a, it's not 100% binary. Again, there's degrees of certainty. Does the thing you, you can you can know something to within your percept your ability to perceive it, and that's the limit of your knowledge. That does would, the thing known you can know? Does the thing known have to be true? Excuse me. Does it have to be true in order to? No, know? it doesn't actually. So I can know that Elvis Presley is the current president of the United States. I could know that. If 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 based on the information that you have available to you, it's possible that you could you know quote unquote know something that's incorrect. Yes. So knowledge doesn't have to be true. No, it doesn't. So people can know for certain that God exists. And they can, they can feel that, and they can, they can still be wrong, yeah. I'm not asking feeling, sir. I'm asking well, about they, knowledge. Yes, they can, they can know it and be wrong. No, but it, you can know something to be true, which is actually false. Is that what you're telling me? <laughs> See, the thing is, knowing something to be true is not the same as having absolute knowledge of knowing that, the absolute knowledge, knowing that okay. it is, in fact, true. If I say to you that the speed of the road outside my house is 30 miles per hour, and I know it to be true, but I could be wrong, do I know it? I've already answered that. So, you know, well, you I'm, I'm not when you, say you, when you say you could be wrong about everything, you've given up knowledge because you can't know anything. Now, now of course, you disagree with that. So my, my question is, what do you know, and how are you able to know it? Like I said, you could be I'm, wrong about everything. As a, again, now, see, again, I told I said this to you before. Knowledge is not binary. There are degrees of certainty. So I can know something to a certain degree of certainty, but I could, don't have absolute knowledge. So, you know, we, I know that gravity works, but until gravity doesn't work, I know how gravity works. However, if something happens, if just say there's, there's some gap in my knowledge, I don't have absolute certainty. I don't have absolute knowledge. So there could be something about gravity that there's some something about it that it's going to function differently than I perceive or I expect or I would predict. That's the limit of my knowledge because how, I don't have absolute knowledge. Neither do how you. How certain are you that? How certain are you that? How certain are you that gravity works? I would say I have a high degree, but not absolute. Okay. Now, in order to determine that gravity works, you're employing your reasoning, correct? That's right. How do you know that your reasoning is valid? I, how do I know? I mean, it could be faulty, which is the reason why I don't have absolute certainty. So if your reasoning could be faulty, you can't know gravity works to any degree. No, see, that's false. That's false. Again, there are degrees. Yeah, see, that's what I said to you before. There are degrees. So this, and I heard the same thing, uh, what's his name? Um, uh, Eric Hoven tries the same thing, but again, he makes a leap. Saying that you can't know something to absolute certainty is not the same as, as saying you can't know anything oh. to any degree at all. So that's fine, I, sir. Your foundation is false. And well, I, can I you tell me accept. how you can know something to one degree? Can you tell me how you can know something to one degree? To some degree. How can you know something to 0.001%? How can you know that your reasoning is valid to 0.001%? Your reasoning could, my reasoning could be faulty. Right, so you can't know anything to point to any percentage. <laughs> no, that's that's not true. Well, then just tell me how you can know the anything. Thing is, to point zero. The thing, the thing is, is that you see, the thing is, you're saying what you're trying to say is that because I don't have absolute certainty, I can't have any certainty. But that would apply to you, sir. So then you wouldn't be able to know anything either. And I and I know you claim that you do. So you refute your own your own position with your assertion. So that is uh, why uh, sir, you're I actually not very close. That I no, I, I'm actually I've said everything I need to say because you're going to ask me the same question over and no, over. No, you're actually I'm very close. You're very close, sir. That in order to have any knowledge, you would have to know everything. You're absolutely right. Or have revelation from someone who no. does. No. You know that so for you're saying, So you're saying you're making an assertion again that to have any knowledge that you have to have absolute absolute certainty, and that is not the case. Or revelation so from your. I do not accept your foundation. So the conversations end ended. Thank you for your time, sir. Appreciate it. Thanks, Joe. Repent while you still can. I've uh, asked people in the in the room if they want any questions before we're done, before we go, and um, I don't know the the um, my feed for the comments on the live feed. The uh, comments. They don't uh, update right away, and all of a sudden I get 
seven. Yeah, yeah it's, it's it's kind of frustrating. That's why I don't. That's why I, I, it's a shame that blog TV is going away because uh, you know the the comment. It's a lot easier to keep up with comments in blog TV than it is in this forum. I don't even try to be honest. I I don't even watch it. I just pay attention to who's who's in the uh, who's in the panel. I got questions. Cy. Actually, actually, actually I, have, I have a question for what's his name, Cy? Cy, yeah. Now, the thing that I think was kind of funny, and you said this when you said repent. And see, you're ma you're making an assumption about that I have something that I need to repent of. Right. That's right. So, what do I have to repent of? Sin sin you have to repent, you have to repent of your sin against the God you know exists. Excuse me. You have to repent of your sin against the God you know exists. No, I don't know such a, that a God exists. Well, the thing is, I've exposed that. I've been, I've been told that, but I don't believe it. Well, I've exposed it, and I'm telling you that the proof that God exists, that without him you can't know anything. But you do know things. No, nah, see, again, you your, your whole foundation is faulty. It's no, you're, I, you're no better at it than Eric Hovind is. So. You know that my foundation is faulty? Uh, yes, I do. Are you certain of that? Uh, yeah, actually I am. Okay, and you and you said that you could be wrong about everything you claim to know, and now you make a certain knowledge claim, which refutes yourself, sir. Well, again, base, base, okay, within the limit of my ability to perceive and the uh, the uh, the laws of lo of logic that we all are using, you said yourself that we have to use them. So, with it within that framework, I, I have I am certain. But the problem is that you're borrowing logic and knowledge from my worldview in order to argue no, against. No, I'm not borrowing from your worldview. Well, let me explain that to you, sir. Logic is not made of matter. Logic is universal, and logic does not change. That's right. If you have an atheistic worldview, you believe in a world that's constantly changing, and likely you're a materialist. But, yeah, not everything. Not well. You see, you're wrong. This you 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 are foisting upon me a position that I don't hold, and that's again why your foundation. Well, I said likely you're a materialist, but how do you account for logic in your worldview, sir? I you know the thing is is that everything doesn't. First off, not everything is material. And secondly, well, numbers. How about what about mathematics? Mathematics is universal, right. and, uh, and they mathematics all, and they is, are is a material. Future world. We can we can use mathematics to represent things in the physical world, but mathematics right. doesn't come from the physical world either. So exactly, and all of those things are feed your worldview. But let's get back to logic. How do you account for logic in your worldview, sir? How do I account for it? Logic yeah. exists. It's a <laughs> it just exists. It's right. Okay, here's my answer for the existence of God. Then he just exists. How do you like your well, see, argument? The thing is, well, like, here's the thing. See, again, because you've assumed my position, I don't believe a God exists, but I don't have absolute knowledge that one doesn't. So it's possible that a God exists that I'm unaware of and that the claims that I've heard that have appeared, have, to me, I've, I've evaluated as false, either some, either one, one or more of those claims is true, or it's possible that a God exists and doesn't fit any of the claims that have been made to me. I just are not, I have not been, actually, I'll tell you this, I used to be a believer, and I've been unconvinced, become unconvinced of the claims that I've heard. However, there may be there may be some evidence that I'm unaware of that would change my position. So again, you've you've put upon me things that I don't I don't uh, positions I don't hold. And see, that's where you lose people. And you will never if you're going to try if your purpose and goal is to try to convert atheists, you will never do it with this line because all you're going to do is go you're going to anger them. Because if I were to straw man you and put a put upon you positions you don't hold, you wouldn't like it very much, would you? My my purpose is not to convert anybody. That's where you're mistaken. I then can't why convert you anybody. To repent? Because that's a that I'm I'm telling well, you because you because you you because you think it would be good for me to repent because you believe I need to and you think it would be good right. for me. Right. I'm to not trying to convert you. Well, that's the, actually that kind of it really kind of is. No, it's not. I can't convert you. I'm telling you so, what you well, need to do. <laughs> well, then what's the point of your website then? The point of my website is to expose the folly of unbelief. Why? And what? And what would be the reason to do that? If because if it's if it's if there, if you're not trying to convert anybody, then what would be the point of doing so? Well, I'd be happy to explain that to you, because the, the the work of conversion is by the Holy Spirit. Now He converts things, but the Holy Spirit does not add content. The Holy Spirit converts people to the truth, okay. and if you don't have the truth, then you can't be converted to the truth. So my job is Why to speak. Why would the Holy the, Spirit need well, you? Let me finish, sir. My what I'm doing is speaking the truth, so that if the Holy Spirit does convert you, you will know the truth. That's my job. I cannot convert you. 
I'm here to well, speak so the truth. You're still at trying to act as an agent of conversion. So whether you say uh, you're I'm trying commend, to convert people or not I'm is commend. irrelevant. You're, you are you are actively trying to become an agent of, of conversion, whether or not well, you, know, you, you have the ability to, to convert truth. somebody yourself or not. Well, see, that's that's the logical uh, conclusion of what you said. So I'm you sorry. Logic, if, you, if you want to if you want to play games and pretend that you're not doing it, but you just said you are. You believe in logic, uh, you just, sir. You, you just kind of word around it, but that is that is the conclusion of what you said. You said, well, basically, you're trying to put the truth out there so the Holy Spirit can convert people. Then in that, you would be acting as an agent of conversion. I'm sorry, but well, that's, well, what, that's what you're trying to do. To you, sir. Let me explain something to you. The Bible talks about goats and it talks about sheep. Mm -hmm. One thing the Bible never says is that goats become sheep. Okay. But Jesus says, my sheep hear my voice. Now, if you're a sheep, then I hope, I'm hoping that these words... God will use in your conversion. But if you're not a sheep, if you're a goat, then what you hear will only fatten you for the slaughter. I don't know what you are, and I and I have no part in which you are. I hope that you're a sheep. That's why I well, do see there right there. You you hope that I will be converted. So you're acting. Why why back away from it? What what's wrong with that? If if yes, it is your goal, and it appears to be. What's wrong with saying you would like you want your words in some way to be helpful, so that if the Holy Spirit is going to convert me or somebody else, that you're putting it out there so it can be done. So That's then you're acting as an agent of conversion. Just accept that. No. That's nothing wrong with that. That's an agent of conversion. You try, you try to play these games and obfuscate, and that's why. You know, you're not going to get anywhere with this. Not an agent of conversion. I'm just giving you the information in hope that the Holy Spirit converts you. Right, which would make you an agent of, conver of well, conversion. That's I'm semantics. sorry, but that's, that's, that's just a fact. That's semantics. However, again, you employed logic and truth. What is truth in your worldview? Truth in my world? In your worldview. According to your worldview, what is truth? Well, see, first of all, another thing to this thing with worldview, I don't have an uh, atheist worldview. Atheist is just a description of of my position on the God question. I right. don't build. I don't build the rest of my the rest of my approach to the world around that lack of belief. Well, let me explain it to you, sir. You have also, a world. Can you explain my position. No, I'm sorry. You're not oh, going to explain. I'm going to explain position. my question I'm, to you. I'm sorry. Take care. I'm going to explain my question to you. <laughs> <laughs> you know. He he wanted to win one little battle before he left, and he wanted to say. You think you can convert me. You're talking to me so that you can convert me. And he wanted to hammer that concept home and feel like he won an argument and then leave. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, that, that's what they'll do. But I'll, I'll explain my question. He's, he's not here. But as far as uh, his worldview goes, and I explained it to one of, the other, uh, one of the other people that were online here too, is that he says that he doesn't have a worldview. But he has a view of the world in which God is not necessary for knowledge, logic, and truth. And when I ask him those questions, you know, he's obviously uncomfortable with them. And that's why I say for anybody watching, it's very easy to expose the folly of an atheistic worldview. Because when they come into this kind of hangout, they, they assume things like truth and knowledge and proof, and they can't make sense of any of them without God. And they get frustrated very quickly. Mm -hmm. Well, we're going to end it here. I, um... I want to thank you for coming on, and um, I'm going to go watch the uh, Syracuse Orange hopefully win the Big East championship game, and um, there are 17 people still watching. If anybody's got some last words for, there are quite a few Christians watching. I'm sure they've been encouraged to see um, how the Christian worldview stands up against um, people who claim that there is no God. I have to get going soon, too, actually. So if there's nobody uh, calling in now, then... No, we're not, gonna add, we're not going to add anybody. We're not going to add anybody. We're going to close it down. Well, you got anything to say, Jordan? No, it's been, it's been nice being with you all. Um, I you know, left it up to Sai Sai. You did a great job, as always, and uh, look forward to talking to you again soon. Oh, praise God for that. Like I tell people, I'm only a tool, and uh, the atheists love it when I admit that. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Sai. God bless. All right. Have a good night. Good night. Good night. Bye, Bye, Jordan. Bye-bye.